So today I'm going to give you about five points and I'm going to just ask you a lot of questions. I'm going to try not to teach stuff. I'm just going to pick your brains and make you question because this side, did, the, did God create the devil evil, raises a lot of questions. And that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to go over questions. So I'm going to ask um, somebody to get this verse ready. Actually, it's on the packet, but you can read it too. In Colossians chapter 1.16. Um, so it's been, just, just to get you guys ready, is that it's assumed that the devil was created good, but chose to be evil. The other side is that God actually created the devil for a purpose to be evil. And God has a purpose with doing that. And that's what we're trying to figure out. Why? But maybe not even the why. Is it yes or no? Was he created or was evil or was he created good? And I've got five verses that raise some serious questions. And I want to teach you guys um, how to look at the Greek today and also Hebrew. And we're just going to ask some questions. We're going to try to do that in about 20, 25 minutes. So it's going to be a rough ride. All right, so here we go. i got five points. Why I think there is a possibility the devil was created evil. All right. Point number one, all things were created through Jesus. All right, let's read the verse. Everything was created through Jesus. Um, and if somebody can read that, Colossians 1.16, David Salgado, thank you so much for volunteering. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or domin dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. Okay. So, with that verse, so each verse chosen because it has something to do with evil, has something to do with demons and their creation and their purpose. So what does this verse have anything to do with that topic? Anybody? And you can read it again if, you, if you'd like. What does this verse have anything to do with what we're discussing today? Well, someone could argue that if he created all things, then he created evil as well. Uh, okay, I'll read it again. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Alright? Everything. Visible and invisible. Thrones or dominions, principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. Alright, so the questions. I, I wrote them down for you. Uh, for me too. What are all things? What is all things when he says all things were created through him? Everything. No, everything. Like literally everything. Everything, <laughs> yeah. everything in heaven, everything on earth, everything that's visible, everything that's invisible. He created it all good. Everything. Okay, good. that's that's <laughs> what we're arguing. <laughs> that's what we're arguing. <laughs> and I'm not going to give you my opinion today. Today I'm just going to pick we're going to pick brains, all right? And we're just going to question some things because the goal is for you guys to know what you believe. And at the end of this whole debate and everything, that's the goal. Uh, but, you know, we're going to get just, we're going to pick each other for a little while. Okay? So, does that include evil things? Because where did evil things come from? If all things, does that include evil things? And you may ask, what are principalities? What are those powers? Um, as you do your studying, there's a, there's a website that would be really helpful to you if you really want to win. Because this, this, so what I'm at right now is I'm at this particular verse, <laughs> Colossians 1.16. This is how it's broken down in the Greek. For it's, it's worded a little, a little different. Because by him were created all things... In the heavens and upon the earth, visible and the invisible, thrones, dominions, or lordships, or rulers. Okay, so on top, this is the number for the Greek word, and this is the actual Greek word. So if you want to know exactly what thrones, or lordships, or rulers, whoops, 
or authorities, if you want to know exactly what that means, because it makes a huge difference if you know that word, all you do is click on it. All right, that's what authorities means. Principalities or authorities are all things, right? That's pretty much the same thing, but some of them have a bigger meaning to it. And then you look at, then you look at where else is this word used? Is it used in only cases when it's talking about evil? Or is it using any time you talk about any heavenly authority? Angels have authority too. Um, any kind of things, or even earthly authorities. All right, so this is very helpful because when we get to the next verses, you'll see why. Um, this is called Bible Hub. And if you, even if you want to whip it out while we're doing this and just check words, it would help you out a lot. But let's finish some of these questions. All right, we didn't, we didn't answer that. The devil... Does that, I mean, the creation of everything, does that include evil too? Any thoughts? Some would assume so, that he created it. Yeah. Yeah, some would assume. Where else would it come from? I think people's own, well, he gives everybody free will, right, when he created them. Okay. So they have their own <laughs> choice to be evil. How okay. To create that. Just keep those keep those questions. I ain't gonna answer anything. Today. <laughs> it's a deep question, but it's it's not as hard as I thought it was. <laughs> you know, the answer. Um, all right, so wrestle with it a little bit. <clears throat> all right, let me ask you another question. What are principalities and powers? What is that? Because if you want to really understand the verse, and if you're gonna argue for it, you just understand a little bit behind it. And it, when it says whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things are created through him. And not only through him, they were created for him. What are those principalities and powers the verse is talking about? Any clue? Any idea? Whenever I saw principalities, I always thought, like, bad stuff. Is it? I don't know. Use this to check. Okay? Use this to check. Um... Lordships or rulers or authorities. I'm going to click on that and see where that goes to. All right, here we go. Power. This is the actual word. I, I pressed the wrong one. It, it means power, authority, or weight. Definition. Power, authority, weight, especially moral authority. Influence. In quasi-personal sense, derived from later Judaism of a spiritual power, hence of an earthly power. So there it goes into the word a little more. Out from, which intensifies conferred power, delegated empowerment, authorization, and operating in a des designated jurisdiction. Sounds like the authority's given. It's got limits. Refer refers to the authority God gives to his saints, authorizing them to act to extent they are guided by faith. All right, so that gets a little deeper. What does that word mean? I can go to the Greek, and I can look exactly, look it up exactly what it meant in that particular time in the Greek definition, not in English translation, in the Greek, which it was written, originally written in. And you get deep, because when you, get, when you start studying the Bible and theology, you need to go back to the original, and that helps you out. All right, so that's the first one, Colossians 1, 16. Everything was created through God, and the other side might argue, well, so was the devil, and he was created evil too. For Jesus' purposes. Alright, might have a tough time, but you could do something there. Okay, so anybody have any questions about that one? Because when you start debating next week, I hope you have an answer to why this is wrong or right. Elmer? Elmer's ready, he's been studying. Yep. Okay, guess not. Alright, let's go to number two. Is God the author of evil? All right, in Isaiah 45, 7, Elmer, if you can read it for us, por favor. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I the Lord do all these things. All right, so what does this have to do with the topic we're on? Give me something. Did God create evil? Did he create the devil evil? According to that verse, what do you think? Okay, that's what it sounds like, certainly. That's 
what it sounds like. All right, let me ask you a few questions. Is God saying that he is responsible for the evil that occurs in the world? No. No. That's not what he's saying. Okay. Then what evil is he talking about? Like on Judgment Day, when he's going to bring evil on to, or judge people and throw them into the... It doesn't sound like he's talking about a future event. It sounds like he does it already. What is he talking about? Is God responsible? Okay, it talks about peace too. What does it say? I form light and I create darkness. Can we agree on that? God makes light and darkness. He created that. I make peace and I create evil. Can we agree on that? It's a little tougher. <laughs> what evil are we talking about? I, the Lord, do all these things. Somebody's going to bring that verse up to you and say, now what, bro? You know, they're going to come at you and say, I won, and drop the mic, boom. And you're, oh. What are you going to say? Any, anybody? You know, what about the angel people? You guys have any arguments for this one? Angels? Um. Nothing? Hey, well, you, uh, on the guys on the other side, you know what to do. <laughs> Just bring this one up, and you win. And, uh, Marty, if you're going to be in class next week, you can join a side if you want. I don't know which particular side, but... All right, this is going to be a rough debate if we don't got no comments here. <clears throat> We're just not prepared. Okay. We, we just don't have anything Just give me some thoughts. Give me some thoughts. <laughs> give me some thoughts. Yes, JC. Well, if you look at the way he's speaking in the verse, it, it says uh, create both for the good things. So he says he creates peace and he creates light. And as a result, it makes darkness. So he doesn't mm. necessarily make uh, create darkness. It just comes about of the peace whether it's from the voidness of peace or the voidness of light. Okay. I form light and I create darkness. I make peace and create evil. Okay, so you're saying that... Uh, well, in this, in this thing that you're, you're showing us. He, when he creates peace, it doesn't mean he creates the other thing. It's just a result of. Okay. That's an argument. <coughs> All right, so when you interpret scriptures, when you look at the Bible, and you want to understand a verse, uh, Elmer in the phone, on your phone in the back, oh, if you're studying back there, that's right, uh, YouTube, that's Elmer, he likes to be on his phone, thank you, uh, now he's getting better, okay, so, in the verse, how do you interpret scripture, because a lot of times, when you, when you, when you're talking with atheists, you're talking with someone who, uh, or even somebody who may not really comp understand the Bible in the fullness, they'll pull out one verse and use that against you. But there's a couple ways of doing that. Uh, scripture interpretation. Uh, I'm going to give you just interpretation. I'm not a uh, theologian, so I'm not going to try to act like it. But I know a little bit about scripture interpretation, and one, there's a couple important things. Context. You guys know what that is? Yeah, you have to like, see the deeper meaning, the deeper meaning, but also like who's he referring to? Okay. Yeah. Context is like if I just say fat, and that you know. You take that back and you say, well, this he says fat all the time. Well, you have to go back, what was I, what was the sentence I was saying that in? Or maybe I said she's fat or she looks fat or something like that. But what, what's the whole story? You can't just take that and say, well, he was attacking her and all this stuff. What's the whole story you're using it in? Because uh, maybe it wasn't so bad after all, if you look at the whole story. Um, I don't know how that could be good, but just an option. All right, context. Context is looking at the whole story, all right, the whole chapter, maybe the whole book. What's the whole chapter of Isaiah 45 talking about? Is it talking about God creating evil? 
Or is he talking about something else? Hmm. All right. Let's just look at the word evil here. What does it mean in the original? This is Hebrew. Old Testament is written in Hebrew. Um, I create peace and I make darkness. I create light and I form all these. I and evil. Okay, evil, the word is ra. Let's look it up. Whoops. Okay, this, so that also gives you all the areas where that word is used. All right, you can look that up too because that helps. All right, what is Ra? All right, here's what the word means. It could mean evil, it could mean distress, could mean misery, could mean injury, could mean calamity. And this is all the different times it's used. Adversity, when that particular word, adversity, seven times, calamity, four times, disaster, two, evil, 94, harm, two, harmful, hurt, ruined, you know. It could be, it could be any one of these definitions in that particular verse, but what is the context saying? And I'll leave that for you guys to find out. When you read the whole chapter, okay, what is he talking about? Is he talking about God is so evil that he slaughters people? He's responsible for tsunamis, killing everybody. Is that what it's saying? Um, I'm not going to give you any of my thoughts today. To, today you're just going to think about it because Josh is going to go hard on this next week. And I hope you're ready. Who else is Josh with? David, David isn't going to be here though. Steve, this is your team, so you better be ready, Steve. Javier, Monica, ooh, she's taking it in, guys. All right? So, is God saying that there's, he is responsible for the evil that occurs in the world? Is that what this verse is saying? I create peace and I create evil. Um, is God responsible for the peace he creates in the world? If he's responsible for the peace, can he be also be responsible for the evil? Or like J.C. said, just because he does one, the, re the result of that is not his fault, or is not his doing. Um, but he lets it happen. Hey, he's going to be coming at you. <laughs> he's going to be coming at you. All right, so is God the author of evil? That's part two. Isaiah, at face value, seems to think yes. But what if you dig a little deeper, what will you find? So it's up to you if you're going to dig a little deeper. All right, I showed. I'm giving you this. Uh, this is Bible Hub, by the way. You could do this right now too. If you're on your phone doing this, I'm okay with that. But if you're texting your girl or your boy, nah, 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 none of that. All right, Bible Hub. You can look up every verse. Pretty easy. I'll show you how to use it. All right, three. The devil was created evil from the beginning of his existence. John eight forty four. All right, and I'm going to ask. Uh, Who's, oh, you don't have paper. Josiah, would you please read this? John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye of your father the, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and of doe not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. All right, what verse in here sticks out to you guys that might help the case for Josh that he was created evil? He was a murderer from the beginning. Beginning. What beginning? His beginning. His beginning. Or another beginning, I don't know. Since birth. All right. Hey, Josh is going to come at you guys, I'm just telling you. The only way you can win is with facts. Because uh, not passion, he's got a lot of it. Well, the verse is self-explanatory, saying that he is the father of it, therefore God cannot be the father of evil. Okay. He is his own principality. Well, who created him? Yeah, how did that get there? Yeah, no, okay. Okay, so he's saying the devil created evil, not God. The everything devil's the father of it. Everything is the image of the father. But, ev but if everything if everything was created through God, is it possible to create something new? Can the devil create things too? Or did he see a bigger purpose? I'm just, yeah, I'm rolling with it. <laughs> I don't know. Alright? Okay, so... Um, JC's got some good arguments. 
<laughs> the devil was evil from the beginning of his, 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 his existence. All right, That's what the verse looks like at face value. You're of the father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. All right, So whether that beginning is whenever he chose to be or when God made him, he was already rolling, killing. All right, so that beginning is probably the hinge, the hinge on everything. Um, and he abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Okay, so again, the devil created evil. Sure sounds like whenever this beginning was, either beginning when he chose to be or beginning when he was created. Um, and again, so these, these verses... It, it's going to take some deeper study to find out. It's not as easy as you might think to just, oh yeah, that's... Um, but I hope, I hope, by the end of the debate and the end of the classes that come after, you guys are pretty, pretty confident on what these actually mean. Because uh, it could mean something else. Okay? Beginning. I'm going to touch on this, see what it says. What is beginning here? Rule, short definition, ruler, beginning. To rule, kingly or magisterial, plural in a quasi-personal sense, almost rulers, magistrates. Archie, ruler, beginning. From the beginning, temporal sense, the initial starting point. What comes first and therefore is chief foremost has the priority because ahead of the rest preeminent. Tough. That's why, hey, that's why it takes study. You know, some of these things aren't quick and dry. You gotta just take some study. All right, like I said, today is just confuse everybody. That's the goal. <laughs> the goal today is to confuse you and get you to, because that's the goal of people who are, or the counter arguments is to throw you off, to ruin your faith. All right, let's just ruin it a little right now so we can pick you up. All right, um, but those are some good. Uh, JC's having some good counter arguments, so I hope you guys can just you know, think about it. Okay, if Jesus came and died for us to kill evil, why the heck would he create it? Is there a purpose, or am I wrong? You know, or something. I don't know. Think about it. Um, okay, so that's number three. Uh, what beginning is the author referring to? Um, JC said uh, the beginning of when the devil chose, right, or something about that. The beginning. What beginning is he referring to? That's something you're going to have to answer. Why is lying in Satan's nature? All right, the verse says, He speaketh of his own, and in other versions it says, of his own nature. Is that intrinsically built in him to be a liar? That's definitely not God's nature. It's definitely not God's nature. Mm -hmm. Could God create somebody like that yeah. and not get his hands dirty? Yeah. Nope. He can't do it. He created Judah yeah, so for no. one sole purpose to give up Jesus. He can have no part in evil. Why couldn't he create the devil to have one sole purpose to create evil? You guys are going to have to answer that. <laughs> Just think about it. This I sent you guys a debate last weekend or the weekend before. I don't know if anybody watched it. Josiah watched some. But you can see what other arguments there are out there regarding the devil. A lot of people don't believe he even exists. The main belief, at least from atheists today in New Age, is that he actually doesn't exist. That's just a... Um, scare tactic. Yeah, like a scare tactic, or people use that so they don't have to put all the blame on themselves. They use, oh, it's the devil. No, it's you, actually. You know, that's, it's, it's a made-up thing. That's what people believe. Okay, so you're not even getting into where he comes from. He's like, he don't even exist. Um, was he created this way? All right, those are some questions you're going to have to answer, because next week, they're going to come out. All right? Number four, God uses evil spirits for his purposes. And this is found in 1 Samuel chapter 16. And Steve, would you mind reading it for us? It's on the paper, number four. God uses evil spirits for his purposes. 
And Saul said and said to him, Behold now, a harmful spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is skillful in playing the leer. And when the harmful spirit from God is upon you, he will play it and you will be well. Alright, harmful spirit from where? God. Alright, in other versions it says evil spirit from God. That one always got me like, what the heck is what? I thought it was just the Holy Spirit. No, it was some evil spirit too? Alright, at least those are the questions that came to my mind. And again, there's, there's answers for these things. Today's just to mess you up. Alright, we're going to mess you up so that Josh can win next week. And then we'll bring it back together. We, well, you got to look what it says. It says from God, not of God. Because there is a spirit of God, and this is just a spirit that comes, that God is uh, sending it, but it's not of Him. Okay. But even if it's affiliated at all, how can you justify that? Even affiliated at all, from, of, okay, maybe it doesn't come from His own being, I don't know. But... Why would God send an evil spirit onto somebody if the whole goal is to actually free us from that? Context. Context. I'm just saying, I'm just throwing out some questions today. All right, because you're going to get it. You're going to get them. And, and how strong is your faith? How strong is what? Or do you really believe what you believe? Or when that's one of these questions going, you're like, oh man, my God actually hates me. I don't know. <laughs> You win, you know. <laughs> it's it's okay to dig deeper when you get questions. It's okay to dig, and that's what we're gonna do. All right. Ha God has power over evil spirits and uses them for His purposes. Obviously, from this verse, God has power over them, and He uses them somehow. I don't know. Does this mean that God gets involved with evil? All right. Does it does it mean that He actually grabs that spirit, tosses it on that guy? And his hands get dirty in the process. A holy God. Because we believe he's pure, holy, never tainted, not an ounce of evil on the guy. <laughs> on him, you know. But at the same time, he sends evil spirits on people. How do you make sense of that? Josh is going to mess you guys up next week if you don't have some answers. David was going to sue Saul, right? Mm -hmm. So... And Saul wasn't supposed to be king anymore. So God is a just God. And he was justifying Saul's evil by putting David there to take his place. Yeah. Precisely that. The spirit of God was no longer in Saul and it was in, in David. Therefore, the emptiness of his spirit is what causes the opposite of good. But says so God, God's evil spirit. No. From God. From God. Nowhere else, right? <laughs> no, it's, so it, what Josiah was saying is that uh, God pulled his spirit out of Saul and uh, he sent David to comfort him. And then some, somehow in this whole mix, God also sends an evil spirit. Uh, or, JC was saying, what if? God, because God pulled his spirit out, he allowed the evil spirits to come in. Because what if God has all authority, all power, and the evil spirits only can do what God allows? Not that he makes them. Just like the situation with Job. Right. It's, it's a little bit of philosophical stuff. But. All right. Last one. Number five. If God is omniscient, knew Satan was going to be evil, why the heck create the fool? Okay. Now, why create the guy? Take a purpose. Okay. Psalms 139, 2 to 4. Um, and if we can have Monica, por favor, reading. 139, verses 2 to 4. You know, when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar, you search out my path and my line of town. 
and are acquainted with all my ways, even before a word is on my tongue. Behold, O Lord, you know it all together. Okay, so you know when I sit, you know when I rise, you know my thoughts from way afar before I even get there. You search my path, my lying down, your, you know everything. Before the words on my tongue, you know it. God is omniscient. He knows everything. From everything you're going to do, everything you've done, exactly what you're thinking now, what you're going to think in 10 minutes, He knows it. Alright, so to have that much knowing, to know that Satan was going to turn and be evil, and to, if, if he was an angel, if he was, if he was going to do that, this could be an argument again, you know, just in case. Um, why create him? All for all the havoc he, he's wreaked on the world, all the murders and evil. Why create such a person that could do that? You know, you think about that uh, with in movies you've seen like they're gonna they they give the prophecy this child will destroy nations and he's gonna be you know, I can't think of an exact movie, but the mom decides to have the kid anyway, you know. And, uh, and it, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. But God knows, yet He created him. Why? Why would He create the devil if He knew He was going to be His biggest enemy? Greatest enemy. Any thoughts? <clears throat> it could that He didn't create evil, but He knew that He was going to become evil. And the same reason that God uses the weak to lead the strong for his purpose to show how powerful he really is. Yeah. Why did he create us if he knew we were going to fall? You know, in Genesis where it said the whole earth was corrupt and evil. Everybody. Their hearts were evil. From their youth it says, why create them? You know, because he did at one time wipe out the whole, with the flood, wiped everybody out. said, they're all wretched. I'm going to save six. Five. Eight. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> three sons, three wives. Eight. Eight. Noah. <laughs> all right. Why do it? <clears throat> So it, it we're right as we dig deeper as you ask some of these questions, I believe you're gonna find the truth. And I believe the deeper you go, you 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 will find God's intent. Some of the questions we aren't gonna be able to answer. Some of this stuff is is beyond us. We just you know who can know why God does everything he does? Who can who who knows? But we look at what we do know. We look at what we do know, and I want to, just a few comments of what we do know for today, uh, to end with. We know from a Colossians that everything was created through Jesus and for Jesus. Everything. Everything was created through Him and for Him. But the question we have is that, does that mean evil too? That's the thing that we're going to, you know, have to discuss. Everything was made through Him. We know that God has power over the world and the spiritual world. All right? He was able to have the authority over this evil spirit. That We know that he, God has total control, total power over everything, good, bad. He's got control over it. Nothing's out of His reach. Nothing's out of His control. There's no power greater. He's over it all. But does that mean He's affiliated with evil and can still maintain His perfect holiness? That's the question we're going to have to, you know. Or does God's sovereignty enable him to control and restrict evil without ever being affiliated? Is he, is his sovereignty, sovereignty is supreme in power, possessing supreme dominion, sovereign ruler of the universe. There is no power greater than God. That's sovereign, complete control, easily. Does that mean with that power he's able to restrict evil, limit evil, hinder it, but at the same time, you know, with, with use it somehow for a greater good? Just think of the cross, okay? Think of the cross. Somehow God planned from the beginning, when Adam and Eve fell, 
He already planned salvation. Before the world was created, he already planned how he was going to do it. Somehow he planned for Jesus to get beaten, stoned, crucified, uh, rejected, everything. He planned all these events perfectly. They're all prophesied about hundreds of years before to be executed perfectly to acquire us, our salvation. How does that happen? It's amazing. So is God evil for doing that? Or how, how did he use evil centurions to do things and you know to crucify the Jews to crucify? How did all that happen? And that's like that's where it gets tough to understand. But, but you miss, you, we miss the whole point in, in all the confusion and that God himself was there suffering for us. Uh, and you know, look at his heart, look at what he would do, and, and that just kind of helps you comprehend who he is because that's what we're trying to find out. Is this God really shady or does he really love me? Hopefully you, you'll be able to understand that. All right, so I went much longer than usual, as usual. Elmer, you were right. <laughs> Next week, we start the debates. Come ready. We start at 10.05. Okay? Uh, teams, I suggest you get together. I have one team left on the board here. I would suggest you get together today. I gave you guys packets of my notes from last week, this week, the structure. I gave Kimberly some cheat notes, which I didn't give anybody else. Um, so, so if you guys can get together. Josh, if you can get together with your team. Elmer, get together with your team and, and strategize. But the goal is to know to know with confidence our God and His character, so we you know so we could trust Him. Today was just to wreck you a little, okay. maybe not. So let's let's pray. We'll close out.